the insurance was $1,334 a year. $1,334 a year. Now it's just about $120 or $40 shy of $16,000 a year. Wow. And uh, we're running probably 20%, 25% less than what we were running at that time. So uh, it's not, it's not uh, always equal giving. Sometimes it's equal sacrifice. And uh, if you're blessed to where you can help, it sure would be a blessing. Amen. I thank the Lord that we've never had to come to you and say, guys, we're in the arrears and this is due and we need it. But uh, I want you to know it's been the case. Uh, that we hadn't had to do that because of people sacrificing. And I thank you for loving God and realizing that the, the church belongs to God. It's His church. We are His church. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you, Father, for all of your blessings to each and every one of us today. We take up this offering. We give this back to you. And you use it in a great way for your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, again for all your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. I just want to say that God is able. Uh, I was a little late today. The Lord had a, an appointment for me. Uh, I usually take snacks to a couple different places, and one is the, um, the laundromat. And uh, a man saw me and said, church lady. <laughs> and so I handed him a snack, and when I, I went in and passed him around, and I came out. And he started talking to me about my ducks, and I told him I duck for Jesus. And he said, um, he's having trouble with drinking. And he said his mom's worried about him, and uh, he's trying to come back to God. He's Catholic. His mother is Catholic, and um, he just needs to stop drinking, but he can't stop drinking. I said, God is able. Yes. He is able. Yes. I cannot do it. He, God can do it. You cannot Amen. do it. God can do it. And so please pray for Jimmy uh, to stop drinking and to give his heart to the Lord. Amen. 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 Let's sit in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Good be with God's people. Amen. Uh, we were sitting out by a fire last night, 
and uh, it's getting to the weather where it's cool enough we can go outside and have a fire and not burn up. <laughs> and uh, we're sitting out there and, and just in, enjoying the just the aroma and the, the just the nostalgia of a campfire. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we, the idea popped to my mind, uh, you know, what's better than the nostalgia of a campfire cooking and eating. So we grabbed a pan, some eggs, some bacon, a piece of steak, and I cooked it up. We had ourselves a little meal out there, and I, I came inside to talk, to put the, put the stuff away. And Dad looked at me and said, so you smell like a campfire. <laughs> and the thought popped to my head, you can't be a Christian, have Jesus inside of you, and you're with God's people, be a frequenter of church and not have the aroma of a Christian. Come on. For an example, look to Peter. Jesus had told him before the before the cock crows, before that rooster crows, you're gonna deny me twice. He said, Well, look, I'll never forsake you. I'm, I'm not ever gonna deny yet. And, and it came time to push him to shove and, and well, he was denying Christ. Right. The only issue was he smelled like a Christian. Yeah. Come on. And, and they knew him because he, just, he was just too much like a Christian. Now, he was, he was in a rebellious stage, and he, was, he wasn't in a, a good, godly Christian stage, but he still, he had we walked with Jesus too close yeah. for three and a half years yeah. to deny it. Yeah. Come on. I want you guys to know, if we're Christians, the world can tell it. Yeah. They ain't got to see us in church, they can tell it. Yeah. And, and let your light shine. Amen. Be the salt of the earth. Don't, don't try to hide it. Don't try to cover it up with a blanket and, and uh, you know, be a secret service Christian. You know, be, be proud to be a Christian. Right. Amen. And I'll tell you what, if you, if you ever want to know what the, what the benefit of that is, anyone who knows how to cook steak knows that a steak grilled over fire will always be a steak grilled on a stove. Because there's an aroma to it. Yeah. You bite it and you can taste the flame. Yeah. And if, if Pentecost is inside of us, Come on, amen. it's something you can't replace. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can't, there's no counterfeit to it. It's just what the real is. And I'm thankful that I have Jesus inside. Amen. And I don't ever want to hide it. I don't want to be ashamed of it. I want to be, be, uh, be proud to be a Christian. And I am proud to be a Christian. But the song I sing this morning is I'd rather have Jesus. And uh, if you know this song, just sing it with me. Oh, man, let me hear 
I woke up Friday morning with a thought on my mind about if any man will uh, save his life, he'll lose it. If any man will uh, uh, lose his life for Christ's sake, he'll save it unto life eternal. And, and I was leaning, meditating toward that and everything. And, and uh, yesterday, uh, after going to the funeral, I mean the wedding, <laughs> Lord, touch Brother Wilson and Sister and Katrina. Amen. And uh, amen. Uh, anyway, I rushed away from there with Edwin and Katie going to the airport in Dallas to uh, preach the revival there with Brother James Persinger and Melissa. And uh, let's be praying for them that God will just bless them and give them a glorious revival. That God can really minister. Uh, to the Hispanic group in that church. They're Amen. growing, they're excited. And only God knows what he's going to do. Amen? Amen. He may call some of them bashful husbands uh, to preach and let them get as zealous for God as some of their wives are. <laughs> uh, have you ever noticed that the women are close when there's a move of God? And, uh, but anyway, <laughs> amen. All right, enough of that. What I'm, I'm saying all that to say I've got... Uh, two messages, and I'm going to try to preach both of them, and I really don't have neither one of them like I need to have, so that can be scary, but you pray and ask God's will to be done. That's all I want is the Lord's will. I chose for a title, The Lord is Coming, and be ready. The Lord is coming, be ready. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, 17, and 18, or the A portion, I think, of 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, 
with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And then if we go to, you can turn to it if you like, uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. You know this, this story about if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. And here it says, for whosoever... Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of you. I used to look at people that had their phone and it took me a while to figure out that a lot of them had the Bible text on their phone. And I'm telling you, I used to be pretty pretty quick at Bible quiz and pretty quick at, at turning over the scriptures and finding it and everything. But you can't touch these guys that's got their Bible plan on their phone. And uh, so if you can't beat them, join them. So I join them. I always go to church. And I don't care if I've got my Bible by my side. i got the Bible on my phone. Up, and that program is ready. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profiting if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Amen. Amen. God help us to see and hear what the Lord is trying to speak to us today. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the yes. Lord. Do you love him? Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we love you today and we praise you and thank you for your word, for your spirit and your guidance today, Lord. And God, we depend on you. Lord, you know, God, I'm not qualified. I'm not prepared the way I like to be, Lord. Oh, God, too many notes and not enough meditation, Lord. But I pray, Holy Ghost, that you have your way in each of us today. Speak through this play, God, that your people can be uh, edified, God, that your word, God, can be lifted up and you can be exalted. And Lord, your will accomplished in each of us. Help us to draw nearer to you, Lord, to please you, God, to hunger and thirst for more of you. And we'll praise you and give you all the glory for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, take up your cross and follow me is a thought that a lot of us don't like to think about very often. But the Lord is coming. And whether he's coming, I believe uh, Rosh Hashanah uh, starts, I believe, Feast of Trumpets on October the 2nd and uh, goes for a little while there. And... Uh, I want you to know the Lord is coming. Whether he comes in the day that you're thinking he's going to come. The Bible says be ready. Amen. For in a day and hour that you think not, our Lord doth come. And I was thinking yesterday when I was at that car wash. And, and uh, the Lord hadn't even given me this thought yet. As far as, as uh, uh, you know, if you save your life, you'll lose it. And if you lose your life, you'll save it. Uh, but... I was watching that man and woman clean their car. And they were so diligent about cleaning their car. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was another lady there. And I talked to her about the Lord. And, and uh, uh, you know, I was thinking, you know, if the Lord were to come in the next couple of days, and I didn't witness to them, come on. how miserable I would feel. How I would feel like that I had disappointed and grieved the heart of God. And I'm telling you, the the uh, the devil's crowd wants us to think we need to keep, I, I wouldn't go say this, but I went to witness to one man, and he was the, the last one that I would have thought would have been kind of belligerent. And uh, 
Uh, boy, he right away let me know. Uh, he said, I'm not going to talk about that. I don't talk about personal things in public. Uh, basically, you're not invited. And get out of my space. And uh, uh, I went on and bowed out gracefully and went back to cleaning the, the van and, and getting ready. And I, I just spoke to him before leaving. And I said, sir, I sure wouldn't mean to be offensive. I just want you to know that I felt an urgency that I needed to share. And I want you to know Jesus loves you and I love you. And I'm telling you, he just meant he really did. He just melted. I believe he, of the other three that I witnessed to, he may be the one that could possibly be going to church and not really settling out to God the way God wants him. He could be the one that used to be really in church, but now he's adrift and he's not going, and it's not that he means any harm. He just really don't have time for it. But I do want you to know Jesus is coming. He's coming. And you and I, whether we think about it or not, it's not going to alter the fact that he is really going to come. And he's going to come quickly. The word, amen, rapture, you say, well, it's not in the church. Uh, but we can look and, and, and see that there's a lot of things going on that uh, uh, are not really spoken explicitly in the Bible. But we give them a lot, amen, more credence. You know, they, they, uh, uh, there's a lot in the word of God about money. But people don't like for the church to talk about money. There's, and I've talked about money probably more in the last two or three months than I have in any year that I've pastored. But God knows. But and I'm not saying that. I didn't plan on saying it. But Philippians 1.21 says, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I know not. I walk not. Amen. For I am in a strait between two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Verse 24 says, Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. In other words, for me to be here, not for me to be fleshly, not for me to be uh, uh, into the cares of this world and, and the pleasure of, of sin or me to be living and, and gaining as much as I can get now. Amen. But for me to be here and be an instrument that God can call a shot of in my life, that God can speak to me and say, Basically, I don't know what the Lord sent me. He just prompted me to witness to that young man. And I would guess him to be about 40, 45. And I, I felt I needed to and I did. But, but I want you to know it's needful for him. All right. For me to be at the car wash. I don't normally go to the car wash on Saturday or Sunday. You know what I'm saying? But uh, uh, I felt I needed to do it for a testimony because people that were at the wedding, they're going to be excited and they're going to be happy and, and it's good. And I don't want to take a dirty car to a happy, jubilant, excited event. Amen? Right. Yes, but yet so many times we'll take a dirty soul, a dirty life, Amen. To an environment where God is needing you and I to be alive, to be vibrant with Him. And I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. That's not my goal today. I just want you to know Jesus is coming. And if there's one person that you see that you feel like you need to witness to, don't. It's not the time for you to begin to examine am I worthy? Am I ready? Is there any spots? Are there any spots and blemishes in my life? Brother, I want you to know he's going to come as a thief in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And it's going to be so fast, we're not going to be able to make any real changes. But if God is dealing with you to witness to somebody, I'm going to say you're clean enough to be the Lord's ambassador. All right. Amen? Because it ain't like the devil wants you to witness to somebody unless he's wanting to send a trap or a snare or get, get mad or create fear or inadequacy in you. And if you feel led to witness to somebody and you don't do it, what has happened is the devil has just won a small skirmish in your life that causes you to have doubt in your heart about your walk with God. If, you're, if you are walking with God, it causes you to say, I'm not ready. It causes you to wonder if the rapture, if the trumpet were to sound and the rapture were to take place, would I be ready? Would I go? Amen. The Bible says, nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. It's not needful for me to abide in the flesh unless God is wanting me to abide in the flesh that he might clear up and clean up some imperfection, some snare, some spot or blemish, some, some greed or some lust or some uh, desire that's not pleasing to God or some ill feelings, amen, towards somebody. 
teaching along the lines that led up to this, but he asked the question, if you have got anger, there's somebody in your heart that hurt you many years ago or whatever, and, and you are still bothered with it today, and he didn't say all that, he was leading up to that, and he said, basically said, if you've got all in your heart against any, I want you to raise your hand. And he broke, he broke down, it seemed like, and almost started crying. And I was praying for him. I prayed for God to strengthen him and God to help him and, and God to minister to him. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me. There's about a 35 foot screen up here. And this seminar was probably recorded two or three years ago. And here I am praying for a man, amen, that's done got the victory over it. And what he said amazed me because I looked around and there were hands all over the house. He said, the thing that astounds me the most is you are hungry, professing believers. Still, somebody in your heart that you have trouble with. And I want you to know that really ministered to me when I was praying for him. And it wasn't even a live event. And he was trying to minister to us. That was a live event. And it's so spot on. And we needed it. The Bible says in verse 27, it says only, uh, Philippians 1, says only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. That whether I come to see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs. That you stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries. Amen. What's he saying there? Only let your conversation, that word conversation means your voice, your actions, and your citizenship, your walk, not just one or two 15-minute segment about your life, but your life. Let your life be a living testimony, known and read of all men. If this were the only Bible, amen, that some people have, they might read it. But if this were the only Bible, me going in Walmart or going in Kroger or Alberson's or wherever, is the only Bible and I'm passing by the ice cream session there. And brother, I want to know I feel miserably over and over in this. I know I fight blood sugar. I don't need to be eating ice cream. But I say I'm going to get some no sugar added. And sure as the world, when I go there, oftentimes there's not no sugar added of the kind that I like. But there is the kind that's got the sugar that I like. Now if I'm sitting there wrestling with that, and God's trying to get me to witness, it's usually women in the ice cream section. The men, sitting there women, their wives to do the dirty work. Amen. They're not man enough to get it. Amen. Because they know they don't need to a lot of I'm not talking about y'all, I'm just talking about me. But my wife won't get it. Uh, I mean, she might if I beg her and plead her, but I don't want to humble myself to that point. And, uh, but what I'm trying to say is it dawned on me. In, today when I was reading this scripture and, and had it down and already had it copied and pasted, but he said, and hey, let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of Christ. That sounds good. And yet all of a sudden it dawned on me that whether I come to see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit. You know, this could be Christ he's talking about. Whether I come today or come tomorrow, I know Paul is talking about he's speaking to, for himself. I, I want to come to you. I want to come see you. And, I, you know, I've all desired to be in your presence. He said in other, other of the Gospels there. But I want you to know, we need to be ready. Because in an hour that you think not, you can't be wrestling with whether you're going to be getting ice cream or not and be listening to the voice of God that you need to be speaking to somebody about the condition of their soul. Amen. The condition of their soul needs full meditation upon God. We need to be able to hear my sheep know my voice and none other will they hear. Did you know I've watched the countenance of some that have come and gone in our church and I watch, amen, that there's a tenderness there and then there's a pleasantness there and everything's fine. But I've watched also that he says here, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries. In other words, don't be terrified when the, the devil's crowd, when the when the accuser, when you're you're wrestling with whether to to get involved with somebody of the opposite sex, whether you're in, in meditating upon something you don't need to be meditating upon. Be it as, as big as 
something bigger. You need to be listening for the voice of God at all times. Want God to speak to you. Want God to help you. And realizing you need help. And in nothing terrified. In nothing. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. What he's saying is don't be as scared of your unpreparedness. Don't be as scared of not being right with me. But walk in such a way in the gospel and with the gospel that God is having full reign in your heart and your life. You know, that old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Did you know only the working of the Holy Ghost can draw a soul to man? We can be channels that God flows to to smile to people and shake their hand and, and witness and be friendly and be a blessing. But I want you to know when people find Jesus, it's because God has sent the hounds of heaven on their trail to get them. Why? Because he loves them. Because when he was on the cross, so to speak, they were on his minds. And he sent his only begotten son to die in Calvary's brow so that they may spend an eternity in heaven. And brother, I'm telling you, almost is not good enough. You've got to have a surrendered heart in life. You've got to be yielded to God and allowing God to do what he's wanting to do in your life. What was going on in the world in that day? We know what was going on in Peter's life. It's spoken of. Seems like almost every service somebody says something. You know about Peter? But what was going on to the church and in the church? This new church. This church that God had established. That he told Peter, I'm going to build my gates. I'm going to build my church upon this rock, upon Christ, upon myself. And the gates of hell are not going to prevail against it. What was going on? You know, in the world around them. You know, we think when we go to church that everything is peaches and cream. And everything's pleasant and nice. But I want you to know some of the greatest warfare that takes place in people's lives often takes place on Sunday morning when they're in church and it's not the norm. When they're in church and God is calling them to come up higher, draw near to Him, be more than what they've been being. Let God grow us and help us and, and strengthen us where we've been weak. Let God help us to see that there's others around us that need our help. Amen. We suffer with a headache or a backache. Yeah. But you let a rock fall down on our finger and mash our finger. And brother, all of a sudden we forget the backache or the headache and we think about the finger. Brother, the body, if we cut ourselves, it goes and the white corpuscles begin to come and fight infection and get the, the blood flow to coagulate it. So there's no crisis and no emergency there to minister healing to it. And I want you to know that's the way the body of Christ is. Amen. We need to be loving. We need to be praying for. We need to be reproving, rebuking, and exhorting with all love and, 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 and long suffering. And you say, well, that's the preacher's job. Brother, I'm telling you, the preacher a lot of times don't know how to say something nearly as good as you might know how to say it. If you'll be aided by the Holy Ghost. Because they expect me to say stuff. They're not expecting you a lot of times to say stuff. But I'm telling you, if you as the lay people are walking with God and you're praying and you're realizing your inadequacy, the same way I realized my inadequacy, I was scared to death this morning. Last night when I went to bed, I was still scared to death, but I was tired. Amen. And why was you scared, Brother Jordan? Well, I've been thinking for two days now I'm going to be preaching, amen, about if you love your life, you're going to lose it. And if you lose your life, you're going to gain it and keep it. And all my meditations and everything was there. And now all of a sudden I'm thinking about the coming of the Lord and the rapture of the church. And are we going to be ready? I say, well, Lord, don't we need to give people some slack? Don't we need to give people encouragement? Don't we need to brag on them and the good that they're doing and let them know that they're doing a good job and if they'll just keep on being faithful to the house 
determine whether they're okay. And what's going to determine whether the blood of Jesus is ruling and reigning in our hearts and lives is whether Jesus is calling the shots in our life. That means we've got to yield our will and succumb to what God wants us to hear from His Word. Amen. One of the central things, amen, of the early church today that we were, Paul was talking to and ministered to there. Amen. They were talking about Jesus' return. They were expecting the Lord to come. Now, Jesus had just died. I mean, why are they all in a roar about him coming? Brother, because they were in love with him, because they were on fire about him. Amen. Because they were expecting. And the buzz was that the Lord, behold, our Lord cometh. Amen. And everybody knew that. We know the word rapture, Latin. Amen. And the word rapture, catching away and, and are being caught up. And in the Greek, it's equivalent. In harpaza, it means to be caught up. But Christians, it's amazing. Christians were being killed. Christians were being tortured and, and being destroyed and killed. But they couldn't kill them fast enough. They were growing faster than they could kill them. You know why they were growing faster than they could kill them? Because the love of God should, could not be outrun. Amen. Uh, Lamentation 3.22 says, It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Now, if God loves us so much, why would God let us suffer? I don't want my kids to suffer. I don't want my kids to suffer anyway. I don't want to lose a limb. I don't want them to get in a wreck. I don't want them to be maimed. I don't want nothing bad to happen to anybody that I love and care about. But I want you to know one of the most loving and gracious things that God can do to somebody that is militant in a way that is not pleasing to God Call it stubbornness. Call it postponement. Call it thinking they've got plenty of time. Call it a desire to sow their wild oats. I stood beside the bed of people that were dying and prayed with them. Some of them ready to go, some of them not ready to go. I was going home one Wednesday night from I was working at a bank in a fountain and I was driving to the church. I had time just to get to the church and if any of you know me, I know I can't stand to be late. So so that could be pride, I guess. But uh, I just like to be on time. That's being respectful to others and that way I can be the testimony that God wants me to be and I can smile and shine to where Jesus can see. You know, uh, a church that there's not any fellowship in going on they say it's not a healthy church. But a church that's happy and vibrant and fellowshipping. Right. You know, every now and then there may be an occasion where you have to come in the last minute. But I want you to know, if you really love this body of believers the way we should love one another, we ought to be excited about being together. Amen. Amen. And spending time with one another. Amen. Amen. Can you receive that in the love of the Lord? Yeah. You know, if, if I was going to a church and I'd never been there before and I drove into the parking lot and for some reason I had in my mind that they were going to be running 75, 100, 150 people and I drove up and church is supposed to start in five minutes. And let me tell you, most people, most people that ever go to church in America today, except for your mega churches, most of them start church around 10 o'clock. I've preached revivals for three and a half years. I've traveled to hundreds of churches. Assembly of Gods, Church of Gods, Pentecostal Church of Gods, Foursquare Churches, Catholic Churches. I preached whenever I got a chance and felt I could. Amen. To be faithful to God. Most of them start at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. So if they get here at 10 o'clock, and we don't start till 10.30. 
And you get here at 1029, we're sending a testimony and a statement to them. And you say, well, it's something that was out of my reach and I had no control of it. Well, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking to you and didn't plan on talking about any of it. But I just say, try to be here early enough to be a blessing to somebody. You say, well, he's just pointing this one out. I want you to know there's not already a family here, including the pastor, that don't need what I'm saying right. this morning. I got here at about 10.25 after I parked the car out front to make the drivers buy. I think there's 150 people in here instead of 25. No, that wasn't my motive. My motive was, was to think, want that one that comes and they're not used to being here. I want them to think people are excited about being in God's house. Yeah. Brother Persinger, my dad always made us drive around like that. And uh, I tell you, I feel like he's a lot smarter and wiser than I gave him credit for a lot of times. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm trying to tell you when God was saving people left and right, you would have thought everything would have been going good. Let me tell you, they were fighting the devil tooth and nail. The people that they thought would have been being excited about them getting saved and giving their heart and life to the Lord, some of their family members, did you know they disowned them? Yeah. I've had people tell me, not since I've been pastor. This was one of the person that was back. <laughs> I'd rather see my husband rot in hell than to see him go down to that harvest time church. Now that's somebody with a problem. Do you hate that person? Is that person still alive? Do you seek for God to be merciful to that person and draw that person to, the, to Him? Yes. yes, indeed. Amen. Amen. But I want you to know not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, is going to heaven. And not everybody that you think is excited about God doing His will through you are excited about it. But God wants you to do it for His glory, whether they're excited or not. I went on and I didn't finish my statement a while ago, and it grieves me to even say it. But I've seen people that came in, and they came in with excitement and joy. But then their joy and excitement turned to a bland. Please hear my heart. This was not planned. That my, their excitement and joy turned into a bland face of just tolerance. And then their face turned to hardness. Whether it be a woundedness, whether it be I've, I've had all I can stand and I can't stand no more. I want you to know, don't let the devil make you so hard until he gets you away from God and God's people. I saw somebody this past week and and I passed them and went on and done my business. And then on the way back, lo and behold, I saw them again. And they were walking. And I just started slowing down and drove over near them, probably within 25 or 30 feet at 18 mile an hour, 20 mile an hour, whatever. I don't know, not fast. And I just know they were almost climbing on top of one another. Not because they were so much in love. They didn't know what I was a drunk or I was crazy or whatever. And it startled and scared them. And we all had a real big laugh about it. But it was a bad judgment on my part. For them to misinterpret it. That, oh, they laughed and everything's fine. But I don't really feel like they should have been that afraid. And I'm not saying the devil made me think that they're not ready to meet the Lord or none of that. I, none of that. I'm just saying, <clears throat> church, God's working on me like he's working on you. Amen. And I have to choose to let him work on me. Yes. And you have to choose to let him work on you. Yes. But while Christians are being killed, don't you fear being killed. Amen. Amen. Your life and their life is a testimony of God's glory Amen. and God's righteousness. And you've got a reputation and God's telling you to be resilient and be faithful. Amen. Amen. Everywhere they went, whenever they went, 
there instead of people being excited about them meeting Jesus. When they come, they brought conviction with them. Not because they were judging anybody, but because the light hiding under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Amen. Letting it shine is not always having your hair down to your bottom. Letting it shine is not always having your hair up above your ears. Letting it shine is not always just outward appearance. Right. Amen. Letting it shine is letting the love of God flow through you to where we're like those three monkeys. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. We let the love of God use us to be praying for people and desiring for God to help people and minister to people. What are we talking about? We're talking about the Lord is coming. And we're talking about being ready. And we know that the way we're going to be ready is to be walking in God's spirit. Not in the spirit that pleases us. Sometimes. My wife and I was on the way somewhere. I can't remember where we were on the way somewhere. And there was somebody that had a flat over on the side of the road. And you know sometimes that happens and you just can't stop. You really don't need to stop. I mean you feel like you need to go where you're going. But sometimes, if we're not careful, will that fear make us think they're going to use that tire jack on us, or they're going to, they got a gun, or, or they're going to do this? And if we're not careful, we will get to the place to where we fear what man can do to us more than we fear whether we're going to miss the will of God for our lives. Yeah, all right. We can be a help to people sometimes. The Bible says for us, don't fear him who can destroy the body, but fear him who can destroy the soul and body in hell. In other words, fear the Lord and love the Lord. Why were they so excited about talking about the Lord's return and the rapture? Because they had just found Jesus, and that first love experience was fresh on their heart and their mind. I'm telling you, I was in a meeting one time and I made, a, I made a mistake. I made a statement that I had been praying. Seems like I said I had been praying for a couple of years for God to restore my first love. And did you know I've prayed a lot in my life the last several years for God to restore my first love. And they probably thought, well, you know, if you were really praying very fervently, you wouldn't have to be praying two years. Because that's what I thought. And I asked God to help me. And help me to be more fervent. And help me to be more urgent. I mean, Tyler not being here today, he might be fine. But I want you to know we need to take it to heart. Amen. And we need to pray and pray and pray and pray. That's what I've done this week. For him and his family. I've yeah. prayed and I've prayed and I've asked God to intervene and undergird. Yeah. I remember going beside a bed. Amen. Of somebody that I loved and cared for. They were in the hospital. And they were going to meet the Lord. And they were ready. But while I was there, you may think me foolish or judgmental or whatever, please don't. But if you do, you're, you're missing what I believe God was trying to show me. I really do believe that God showed me some people I have to take this way. And there was a better way. But I wanted it to be with me. The safest thing for them was suffering. The safest thing were them, for them may have been a hospital bed. Yeah. Please don't go thinking everybody that's in the hospital has got wreck in their life and sin in their life. Now, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about God wants us to know that we've not arrived. Amen. Amen. God wants to do a work in our heart, in our life, and he's wanting to speak to us. Yes. And God knows when we need to be thinking about the Lord is about to come 
for urgency for others or what do we need to be thinking about? God, help me to be willing to lose my life. That I might find it hereafter. Lose my life. That others may find you in their life. And be pleasing to you. Amen. God, help me to live in a state of expectation. We need to take up our cross and follow the Lord. Matthew 16, 24. Mark 8, 35 and 36. Luke 17, 33. John 12, 25. What are you saying? All of these scriptures use the reference to losing our life that we might find it. In all four of the Gospels, it's urgent. Are you losing your life? In other words, are you taking up your cross? Are you suffering with the Lord? That you might reign with the Lord? I know all of the price has been paid on the cross. There's nothing we can do to further merit our salvation than being washed in the blood. That makes us heaven ready. That's our ticket, our pass. Amen? Amen. But I do want you to know there's a cross. There's a cross. There's a willingness to let God eat up the pride in our life. There's a cross. There's a price. And I don't know what that price may be for you. I don't always know what that price is for me. But a lot of times when God does show me some of the price, Brother Timothy, I'm not really ready to deal with it right then. But I want you to know if you're ever in a situation and God is tugging at your heart, you may not be able to deal with it right then. But you be aware you cannot put it off too long. You've got to be waiting, Amen. willing, right. sensitive. Yes. And I know the night that I come from that back pew back there and came up to this altar here, I felt like that night it was do or die for me. I didn't come that night. I was not going to come at all. And I came. And I submitted and I surrendered. And I want you to know, I sat up here on the second pew. And the former general, bishop, overseer of the Church of God was holding a meeting that afternoon. And I sat over here, felt lonely. I mean, my wife had left me, not Sister Kim. Felt empty. I was living at home with mom and dad. God had called me to preach, and I was just barely making it. I didn't know what God was going to do with my life. Or maybe God hadn't even called me to preach at that time. I don't remember when it was. God saved me in January and called me to preach in about March, I think. Feel me with the Holy Ghost. And they begin to sing, there's a roof up above me. I have a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord. For your blessings on me. I want you to know we're blessed. Yes. We're blessed and highly favored, but we're blessed by the love of Jesus. And anything the enemy has distracted you with that would keep you from wanting to love him more and wanting to know him more and serve him more, it's a trick. They're trying to keep something from you that's better than what you got. Love him. And ask him to help you to love, love him more. In the last two or three weeks, I don't know exactly what day or week, but in the last two or three weeks, I'm sure it hadn't been a month, I was praying. I was telling the Lord how much I loved him. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I'm telling you, God stopped me, I feel like, and made me think about it. And I don't love him near near the way I need to be loved. Right. Am I a hypocrite? No, I don't believe I'm a hypocrite. I just believe I can be indifferent to His will by gradually getting comfortable, being at ease in Zion, and 
comparing ourselves among ourselves. And, well, the rest of the church world's doing this. I ought to be fine. When God may be wanting you to win 37 people to the Lord in the next month. And most of these preachers are not even having a desire to lead one person to the Lord in the next month. I shouldn't say most. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that's a possibility. We shouldn't have our eye more on the offering pan. And I'm talking about preachers. Than we do what God is doing in souls. God help us. Lord, don't let me be worried about the wrong thing. You say, well, what are you worried about, Pastor? I'm worried about worry. Because of worry, to worry, is an affront to God. It's, it's, it's bad. It's a lack of faith. And God don't want us to worry. God wants us to worship. Yeah. Amen? Praise the Lord. I know this is all over the place. And I trust that God has ministered to you whatever area you need the most. And you pray that God do the same for me wherever I need her the most. But God give us souls. God give us a burden for the lost. And God help us to be on fire and ready for the return of the Lord like we were the first few weeks that God saved us. Sister Diane, you remember? Glory to God, you remember? We thought she was happy and everything. And brother and sister person here come in here and glory to God. God helped you to pray through it. Amen. And serving the Lord, I don't know. But I know one thing. After walking in fellowship and communion with Him a few days, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. And if it's not joy unspeakable and full of glory in my heart and in your heart and life, we need to be praying more and asking God to show us what's the problem. And he's not the problem. Amen? Amen. I love you. It's about 15 or 16 minutes till. That clock's a little fast. Why don't we find us a place to just talk to the Lord and just, just let God bring the message home to us and God do whatever he wants to do in each of us. But if you don't mind, pray for, pray for Mike, that guy that I witnessed to yesterday and his wife. And what was that other guy's name? Jimmy. Jimmy. Pray for Jimmy. And pray for God to keep uh, Brother Wilson and Sister Katrina safe on their honeymoon. And God to gloriously use them. Amen? Amen. Let's come if you don't mind and let's find us a place to just get shut in with God today. If men would pray on this side of the